PBL is a collaborative learning method based on constructivist learning theory. The method is constructed out of seven steps, which are systematically carried out in an interactive group facilitated by a tutor. PBL supports students to be active learners as they individually tailor what and how they learn. Let's take a look how PBL is implemented in practice. Good morning. Good morning, Essie. And welcome to this uh, first proper based learning session in our collaborative learning course. And uh, you are already familiar with the proper based learning method, so we are not going to go it through. But we today we have two hours for steps one, two, three, four, and five. And then we have one week for your individual study phase, and then again we meet here for two hours and elaborate the knowledge you have uh, learned during the individual study phase. But as you know, first of all, we need uh, one, someone to chair the discussion, who is like keeping uh, the follow of the discussion going on and taking care of the time and so on. So any volunteers for? I can do. Okay, <laughs> Carolina, you okay. are chair. And then we need uh, somebody to be a secretary to take notes uh, of the discussion and also uh, having some summaries during the session. Okay, Eva. <laughs> Huge. And then, of course, everybody are active group members and discusses it equally. And, and yes. And here I have now the stimulus material for you. So uh, today we have a stimulus uh, in the form of a picture. So I give these materials to you and then chair, you can start leading the discussion. I will be here all the time observing and participating if, if needed, but okay. you can start. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, what do you see in the material? There's collaboration. Yeah. Right corner. Uh, half of group they struggle with the task. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. And uh, it seems that those two authors they have idea. Yeah. Not how to go in. And one of them is pretty frustrated. Yes. Yes. And in the upper left, uh, the students are sleeping and the teacher thinks that everybody is uh, as excited to ah, see it. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems that students have a very minor role in that lesson. Yes. That they, are, uh, they are very small size. And that the teacher is leading the mm, it's very clear. thing. Okay. Should we move on to the next step? Uh, based on this material, what do you think is the initial phenomenon or theme that we are going to solve? Mm, teacher's role? Mm. Or yeah. But also, I think that, that the upper or lower right picture also somehow describes also problems with the collaboration because it seems that the classroom is just doing yeah. uh, random things and they are noisy and it's, it's mm -hmm. not in the control. Yeah. So it, yes. it can be issue also. So. And in this case, be general enough. So those two examples teachers' mm. role in collaborative learning or challenges in collaborative learning, they are like loose enough. So they okay. are both good if you want yeah. to end up with either of those. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, teacher's role in collaboration. I, mm. I tried it here. Yeah, yes. Okay. okay. We could also now brainstorm about the theme. And so you could all write down any knowledge or prejudice you have regarding our one idea or one, one concept per paper okay. and it's important that you every time you write that word you say it aloud and then you put it to the middle of the table uh -huh. and don't use you don't have to be critical at all at this point the ultimate aim is that you produce 
as many ideas as you can. Can I just say it? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have a first thing, instructional design. Yeah, just okay. say it and produce yeah. a new. Okay. As many ideas as you can. General uh, support. Mm -hmm. Really general. Caring, interaction. Psychological safety. Formative assessment. Critique. Let's structure this information into a mind map and find the relationships and gaps within the information. Edu, can you help? Yes. <laughs> Teachers' role in collaborative learning. And then we have interaction. Okay. Let's start from here. And self assessment. And planning. It's not related to no. this. So what kind of learning objective could be formed based on this mind map? And it should be as clear as possible, such as the question or statement. And at this point you can think that what interests you the most mm -hmm. from these aspects that you have been written there, or that that what do you already know about teacher's role and what kind of you want to know more mm -hmm. and mm. form the learning objective based on that. Could we have a some kind of uh, uh, aiming question that how to design mm -hmm. collaborative, collaborative learning with support? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, like, can you repeat? <laughs> that, uh, how to support collaborative or how to design collaborative learning so that it supports? How to design collaborative learning? Yeah. How to design collaborative yeah. learning? Yeah. Is it too simple? No, it's it's, it's quite clear. Yes, and it's easy to find articles related okay. to that. There are a lot of so articles. So should we write it down here on our notes or? Yeah, you can write it there in the online learning environment okay. which you have there. Okay. We have Perfect. Yes. And now when you have the question, now you have one week time for the individual studying case. So find one or two good uh, research scientific articles related to, to that uh, question and make notes because next time when you come back here, each of you have a few minutes time to shortly present what you found out, what you learned during the individual studying case. Okay. okay, have a nice week and let's see you next week at the same time. Okay. Step 6 includes allocated independent working time where students utilize personal research skills to find and acquire information in order to answer to the question formed in Step 5. Okay, 
Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome back to this collaborative learning class. Today we have the second problem-based learning meeting where we go through the final step, the step seven. And as you know, we start with uh, individual that you shortly summarize what you have learned during the individual studying phase, and then you discuss that how would you finally answer to your question which you said last time. And in the end, I will give you shortly my feedback concerning how you have been working and solving the problem. Okay, so let's share our findings from the independent research about this, how to design collaborative learning. And Jari, could you start? Yes, uh, I, I use Google Scholar okay. to find uh, some references uh, related to tasks and uh, I enjoyed a lot of uh, reading Pierre Lebrun's work about scripting and, uh, for example, concept of didactical envelope was quite uh, enlightening to okay. me. And I would like to discuss more. I can share it. It's available here. Okay. My computer. I can share it to you yeah. for further reading. Okay. I think I read something related to that about okay. student roles. The teacher can give some sort of role for the students. Yeah. For example, like information seeker or critic or, or something like that, it, mm. it might be useful. Yeah, and I learned that uh, it's important that teacher gives uh, uh, feedback to the students in mean while the process. Okay, and also I found an article from Kirchner about minimal guidance that how it is beneficial for the collaboration if the teacher uh, interferes as, uh, as possible. Mm. Okay. okay, so what kind of solution can we conclude on our question mm. based on the research findings? I think that uh, all articles are perfect to answer this mm -hmm. uh, because those are so from so many different viewpoints and are quite practical. So uh, why not to continue to combine our mm -hmm. theoretical construction on the about practice. I think that our papers were pretty good. I'm very happy mm -hmm. from my behalf. So how would you summarize now the answer based on your discussion that how to design collaborative learning? Uh, well, through our different points of view, like mm -hmm. with scripting and giving roles to students and giving feedback and also with minimal guidance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I think that we have now uh, finalized this BBL case, and uh, as I have observed your your group work, I can say that it was really focused. You were focused on the topic all the time, and also uh, you proceeded really fluently. And the chair and the secretary did a great job. You were organizing the discussion all the time. And I'm also really pleased um, that you have really high quality papers which you read, each of you, and also they were well in line with your task. And also this question that you said last time is really well in line with the course objectives. And also from my perspective I can say that you have reached the learning objective which you said last time. So very, very good job. And now we continue next week to the second problem-based learning case. Well, thank you all, and let's thank see you again next week. See you. Okay. See you. Thank you, Asian teacher. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>